Welcome to Sirwin's Accounting Lectures. Today, magkakaroon tayo ng pen and paper video problem solving patungkol sa Lecture 05, Par Value and No Par Value Shares. Actually, ang link o mismong file ng problem na sasagutan natin today ay nasa description ng video lecture na ito. At ang advice namin, isagutan mo muna ng solo ang nasabing problem at bumalik ka kapag tapos ka na to confirm kung tama ang pagkakaintindi mo sa lesson at hand at kung tama rin ang sagot mo. Okay? Pero kung may sagot ka na nga, simulan na natin ang pagbibigay ng solution ng problem under discussion. So again, our topic is Lecture 05, Par Value and No Par Value Shares. Here is our problem. Katrina Corporation articles authorize the issuance of 100,000 ordinary shares. Katrina sold the following ordinary shares during 2020. February 12, sold 1,000 shares for 100,000. March 5, sold 5,000 shares for 630,000. August 6, sold 7,500 shares for 1,050,000. Okay? Prepare journal entries to record each issuance and compute for the legal capital assuming that the ordinary shares has a 100 peso par value, the ordinary share has a 10 peso stated value, the ordinary shares has no par or stated value. Actually, there are three assumptions. But for now, magsimula muna tayo dun sa assumption that the ordinary share is a par value shares. Okay? So, ano nga ulit ang par value shares? The amount per share can be found in the article of incorporation and the share certificate. So now, ang una talagang gagawin is gumawa ng memorandum entry patungkol sa authorization of shares. Pero laktawan na natin yun at dumiretso tayo sa pagpipresent ng mga journal entries. Okay? So what will be the journal entry in February 12, 2000? So, since meron pong cash, we debit cash for 100,000. And then, ang inisyo po natin, sabi sa problem, is the what we call ordinary share. Okay, pero dugso nga natin, gawin natin ordinary share capital para makita po na siya talaga ay amount. Pero actually, okay lang din naman na ang gamitin is yung account title na ordinary share. Okay? How do we solve the ordinary share capital account? Actually, this account title is always measured at par. So therefore, 1,000 multiplied by the par value of 100 peso, that will be equivalent to 100,000. So what can we say? The cash received and the par value of the share is equal. That's why, tapos na po ang ating journal entry for February 12. Now, let's move on with March 5. Sold 5,000 shares for 630,000. Same concept, nakatanggap po tayo ng cash amounting to 630,000. That's why, we debit cash for 630,000. And then, we are going to credit the ordinary share capital account. Okay? Since this is measured at par, we have to compute 5,000 shares times 100 peso is how much? Okay? The answer would be 500,000. At napansin po natin, hindi siya balance. That's why, lalabas yung pangatlong account entry or account title na tinatawag na share premium. Pero mas maganda, since na-identify natin that the share premium is related to ordinary share, we have to put dash ordinary. Okay? The share premium account title is always sa balancing figure. That's why we have to compute. 630,000 minus 500,000 is how much? The answer would be 130,000. And then we move on with August 6. Okay? Under August 6, Sold 7,500 shares for 1,050,000. So we are going to debit cash for the said amount, 1,050,000. And then we are going to credit ordinary share capital. Okay? By how much? We have to multiply the number of shares issued, which is 7,500, with its par value of 100 peso. So that is... 
amounting to 750,000. Okay? Since hindi na naman siya balance, lalabas nga ulit yung account title na tinatawag na share premium. So, credit share premium. Pero mas maganda para ma-identify kung saan siya nag-arise. So, therefore, dash ordinary. So, how much is that? So, I believe that will be 300,000. And how do we get 300,000? Again and again, that account title is a balancing figure. So, meron pa po bang journal entries na required? Wala na. So, we move on with the question, how much is the legal capital? Okay? If the share is a par value shares. Sabi po dun sa discussion, ang par value kapag ka... Ah, sorry, ang legal capital kapag ka par value shares is only the par value of the, the shares issued. So therefore, ang i-add natin for February 12 is 100,000, for March 5 is 500,000, and for August 6 is 750,000. So how much is that? So 600,000 plus 750,000 is equal to 1,350,000. So again, that would be the legal capital kung sakali po ang shares natin ay par value shares. Now, let's go with the second assumption. What if the ordinary share has a 10 peso stated value? So ano nga ulit ang ibig sabihin ng stated value? Meron daw value na matatagpuan sa other documents ng corporation pero hindi mo makikita sa kanyang mismong share certificate. Kaya nga po, ang tawag dun sa value na yon is not par but rather stated value. So now, what will be our entry for February 12? So again, the transaction is sold 1,000 shares for 100 peso. So now, we write the answer. We debit cash, okay, for 100,000. Kasi natural, yun nga talaga yung pera na tanggap mo. And then we credit ordinary share capital Okay? For how much? The answer would be 10 peso times 1,000. Kasi nga, the ordinary share capital account is always measured at par or stated value. So the answer would be 10,000. And the balance will go to share premium account. Okay? At para nga malaman, lagyan po natin ang dash ordinary. Paano nga ulit ito kinikwenta? The answer is the difference of the stated value and the consideration received or the cash na nga. So that will be 90,000. Okay? Now let's move on with March 5. Under March 5, sold 5,000 shares for 630,000. So same concept, ang cash naman kasi ay hindi mababago. So debit cash for 630,000. And then we credit ordinary share capital, okay? Amounting to how much? There are 5,000 shares at 10 peso stated value. So therefore, that would be 50,000. And the balance will go to share premium account, okay? So therefore, we credit share premium dash ordinary. So how much is that? That would be 580,000, okay? Kasi nga, siya nga po yung balancing figure. Now, let's move on with August 6. So, August 6, sold 7,500 shares for 1,050,000. So, automatically, we are going to debit cash for 1,050,000. Okay? And we are going to credit the ordinary share capital account. Okay? For how much? So, again, It will be measured at its stated value. So therefore, 7,500 times 10 peso for value, a stated value I mean, amounting to 75,000. Okay? And the balance will go to share premium account or share premium dash ordinary. So how much is that? That would be 975,000. Okay? So after that, we have to compute for the legal capital. You have to remember that the legal capital under stated value, stated value shares is the total of the stated value and its excess or yun na nga pong tinatawag na share premium. So what we are going to do is add all of them. We add the 10,000 and the 90,000, okay? The 50,000 for the second transaction and 580,000.
Okay? I-add din natin yung 75,000 at yung 975,000. Sa madaling salita po, in natin silang lahat. Okay? So now, how much is the total? And that will be our legal capital. And the answer would be 1,780,000. So that will be our legal capital. So again, what is the difference between stated value shares and the par value shares? Kapag po ano, kapag par value shares, ang computation ng legal capital, ang sinasama lamang ay yung kanyang mga ordinary share capital account or yun na nga pong tinatawag na na par value. Pero kung sakaling stated Shares, okay, stated value shares Ang gagamitin po natin is the stated value and also the excess, the share premium account That's why yung pagkikwenta po ng legal capital ay magkakasama na dito silang lahat And that is totaling to 1,780,000 Now, let's move on with our third assumption The ordinary share has no par or stated value shares Okay, so we do the journal entry first Under February 12, the transaction says sold 1,000 shares for 100,000. So since wala namang par value or stated value, automatically the amount of cash and the ordinary shell capital account will be equal. So the entry will be very simple. So we are going to debit cash amounting to 100,000 and credit ordinary share capital. Also, Amounting to 100,000 Next, we move on with March 5 Sold 5,000 shares for 630,000 So we are going to debit cash for 630,000 And credit ordinary share capital Also, Amounting to 630,000 And lastly, for August 6 We are going to debit cash For 1,050,000 Kasi nga, sabi nga pala ng problem The order sold 7,500 shares For 1,050,000 So that's why we debit cash for that amount And credit ordinary share capital Also, for the same amount Napansin po natin, again and again, na kung magkano yung cash, yun na din yung ginagamit na ordinary share capital account. Kasi nga po ang dahilan, wala naman siyang par value or stated value, kaya parehas lang din naman ang lalabas. Now, the last question would be, compute for the legal capital. Okay? Ang legal capital, kung sakaling no par or stated value shares, ay simple lamang. Ia-add mo lang yung ordinary share capital account, lahat sila. So therefore, the solution would be 100,000 plus 630,000 plus 1,050,000. So pag in mo na siya, siya na po yung legal capital. And I believe that will be amounting to 1,780,000. Okay? Mapansin po natin, kung sakali pong ang shares ay stated value shares, ang legal capital niya is 1,780,000. Pero kung sakali po na ang share is no par or stated value shares, ang kanyang legal capital ay katulad din niya, which is 1,780,000. Kasi kung sakali lamang par value shares, hindi isinasama yung excess. Okay? Pag stated value, kasama yung excess. Pero pag no par, no stated value, automatically, lahat naman ng amount, yun na po yung legal capital. So, hindi natin malalaman kung may excess or wala. Kaya silang dalawa ay pareho sa side na to. So, okay? So, dito na po natin tatapusin ang ating lecture. Kasi ang atin lang pong punto ay ikumpara, okay, ang par value shares and no par value shares by presenting a certain problem. So, maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig.